Uh, in setting the stage for a very important topic, I'd like to start us out with three main points. <clears throat> and those are that, number one, that uh, both human and machine learning are resource and context dependent. They're both structured and scaffolded. They're both influenced by multi-level and longitudinal factors, as well as new technological frontiers. That's number one. Number two, the mutual benefit that we call reciprocity between human and machine learning is not static. It's dynamic and it takes place in complex ecosystems. It evolves more like a spiral than a loop. And lastly, that empowering the human experience through advances in machine learning requires transformation in the human talent pipeline. And we have had a variety of conventions in our gatherings at MediaX and around the world. Uh, as we meet with uh, people from various countries, we learn their conventions for greeting each other, whether it's an exchange of cards, a small gift, a fist bump, an elbow bump, or a hug. And this uh, important culture for our community gives us context. Uh, and as we have moved this past year into uh, the virtual world, we found it necessary in media exploration, a virtual platform that we developed for some of our meetings and conferences to actually uh, codify uh, the steps that were involved in meeting, networking, uh, communicating, all this to say that the culture, the conventions uh, of a community are very important for setting context. And this is especially true in learning. To say, what is learning? <clears throat> and uh, on the left, you see Stanford students from the Graduate School of Education um, learning and teaching uh, first graders. There's a reci reciprocity in this process and uh, they are both teaching and learning. On the right, this is Jack Robert II, uh, a mobile uh, self-activated uh, uh, robot that Stanford students have created that roams the campus. And uh, in addition to teaching itself about traffic patterns and uh, student activities is teaching people how to interact with uh, robots on the pathway. And so we're talking about learning in humans and in machines, but they are different. Human learning occurs when we're able to gain a mental or physical grasp of the subject, make sense of the subject, event, or feeling by interpreting it in our own words or actions. Human learning allows the use of newly acquired ability and knowledge in conjunction with skills and understanding that's already possessed. We use the same word learning for machine learning. Machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence that allows software applications to become more accurate at predicting outcomes without being explicitly programmed to do so. Machine learning gives the machine the ability to self-learn without being explicitly programmed. And I think these are not novel concept definitions to you, but I think that for the conference and today, tomorrow and Thursday's uh, conversations, it's important to differentiate them. I want to recommend two outstanding books uh, that kind of cover the waterfront uh, for human and machine learning. Uh, on the left, new book by Stuart Russell and Peter Norberg. It's the fourth edition of their Artificial Intelligence Modern Approach. On the right, a cultural Handbook of Cultural Foundations of Learning by Nasser, Lee, P. and Royston, a novel collection of uh, scholarly articles that talk about the importance of cultural 
and how it is foundational to learning. And drawing from these two, uh, some very interesting similarities and differences. Both human and machine learning are situated and organized. Human learning is dependent on resources like the environment, the roles that people play, the personal identity that each individual involves, mm -hmm. uh, involved has, and the intention and engagement that they have. Machine learning is resource dependent, but it is dependent on the systems that it operates on and the algorithms, the data that it uses and the computational power that it has. Both are structured. Human learning is structured on the cognitive and emotional scaffolding. In other words, layer by layer that is built on relationships, on the emotions, the affect, the motivation, and importantly, the culture of the individuals involved. Human learning is also structured by privilege and by social structure. Now, machine learning is also structured, of course, on algorithmic structures that include biases. Their uh, machine learning is structured by how it assimilates data and how it makes accommodations to that data that are prescribed. Machine learning is structured also by the policies embodied in the objective functions on which the algorithms are based. Both human and machine learning are multi-level and uh, take place uh, in dynamically over time. So they are influenced by longitudinal uh, changes. There are new frontiers in both, and we're excited about these we, and have um, catalyzed and sponsored some research uh, along some of these lines. Human machine learning is blossoming under the new studies of neuroscience. And at the individual level, each indiv individual's ability to wonder about the world, to collaborate with others, and to work in a distributed cognition, um, uh, work with information technologies in order to accomplish distributed cognition is very exciting. Machine learning is blossoming under the new developments of sensing that allow much more and different types of um, feedback uh, under uh, faster and more powerful computing. Uh, under new developments in deep learning and in reinforcement learning. And both human and machine learning are strongly influenced by the frontiers of empowerment, meaning the agency that can be given to an individual and to uh, a machine. Curiosity and discovery and the ability to provide feedback. Similarities and differences, but both human and machine learning are situated and organized. Talk about reciprocity, and by this, I, we mean mutual benefit. It's not static, it's dynamic. And whether we talk about the human in the loop, human machine loop, or whether we talk about the machines in the human loop, uh, we have to acknowledge that the loop is not simple. It's very complex. The ecosystemic nature of where data comes from, where, how it's used, uh, and the different policies and algorithms that may manipulate it as it uh, journeys through that, uh, through its use, uh, are very complex and involve an ecosystem. The ecosystem of learning for people is very complex from families to communities to uh, mentors to work environments to leisure uh, and all of these change over time. So the dynamic nature of reciprocity is critical to keep in mind. Uh, whether we talk about human in the loop or AI in the human loop, I think our perspective is uh, has to consider that it's dynamic and changing all the time. 
And in order for that human in the loop of EI and the human loop to work, we must recognize that the human talent pipeline requires transformation. I recently uh, have been involved in a study sponsored by the National Science Foundation through the Society for uh, Innovation uh, System Professionals. And uh, it, this study will be reported in a couple of weeks at the Association for Human Factors. But interestingly, gathering information from uh, industry about their needs for new hires, they said something profound. They said that the technical skills are important, but the rec industry recognizes that those will need to be upgraded and updated over time. And they're willing to do that. They take that responsibility. The important skills, the foundational skills that are needed by the people coming into the workforce, the human talent pipeline, rely on work practices and rely on uh, their thinking skills, the ability to think creatively, cognitive flexibility, decision-making, leadership, curiosity is a skill that needs to be, uh, that industry is looking for. And so the uh, uh, importance of uh, this, these transformations uh, have been embraced by Stanford. Two university-wide programs are uh, acknowledging these, uh, the Human-Centered AI Initiative and also the Transforming Learning Accelerator. We are also hearing from industry that professional development is vital for the current workforce, that uh, AI and ethics are really important for the whole enterprise to understand. Uh, enterprises are trying to transform their instructional infrastructure and develop new ways for industry university collaboration. We've been happy to be a part of these, uh, of these investigations, of these studies, and I will say that there are two initiatives that are still uh, developing. Um, a follow-on from the NSF study that is underway, uh, which if you would like, you might have a chance to participate in. And uh, additionally, uh, a curation by MediaX of some of the most important questions to be asked for the future. This is the 10, 15, 20 year future uh, that can be uh, infused and inspired into the academic um, search agenda. So let me say that uh, community, context, culture are all important. And I'm very happy to uh, turn the program over to Elizabeth She's going to take us through several critical uh, factors of uh, consideration as we look at the future and anticipate arriving in the same future together. Thank you. Thank you.